Nmap, or Network Mapper, is an open source network scanner created by Gordon Leon, aka Fyodor. Nmap is used to discover hosts and services running on a computer network by sending creatively crafted packets and analyzing the responses. Before we start, we need a bit of basic information about networking. When communicating with other computers over networks, computers use ports to determine what gets sent where. The main two ways to transfer information are called TCP and UDP, standing for Transmission Control Protocol and User Datagram Protocol, respectively. A computer has 65,535 TCP ports and 65,535 UDP ports. I realize this is glossing over a lot of information, but this is just the bare basics so that you can use Nmap. Nmap runs on the command line, so we'll be going over the most useful commands and parameters for ethical hacking. Okay, I am running Kali Linux on the left in VirtualBox, and on the right I am running Metasploitable, also in VirtualBox. If you don't know what Metasploitable is, it's just a vulnerable virtual machine, so um, we can test out a few of the Nmap scans to see what it can find out. And if I go into Metasploitable and put in ifconfig, we can see here that the... Uh, IP address of Metasploit was 192.168.48.5 so that will be the IP address we'll be using so if we come over here to the left we'll start with a nmap default scan so there we go so there's no options here it will just be the defaults so we'll set that going and let's maximize this this shouldn't take too long right now we can see that it's discovered a number of ports which are open. Now, you can see for each entry you have the port, so it's TCP port 21, and it is open, and the service it thinks it is running is FTP. I only say thinks because um, sometimes these can't be accurate. See, this one at the bottom says unknown. Some of the, like It will try like a good guess, but sometimes these can be wrong, but you have to do a, an extra couple of steps later just to confirm what it's running but for now this is just a, a nice brief overview of everything that's running and um, the default scan is the same as putting this into nmap so first of all is the scan type which is a sign or stealth scan as it's also known the timing of the scan is three which is the default timing so it's not too fast not too slow the timings go from zero to five, but three is what most things will run at unless you specify. Um, it will also do top ports 1000. Now, what Nmap does, or the history of this, is the guy who made it, Fyodor, he actually spent some time scanning the internet. And the most common ports that were open, he put into a database, and this is where the top ports um, comes from. So if you put a 1,000 into it, it's the top 1,000 on that list that were open on the internet during his research. Whereas if you put 100, it'll be the top 100 on that database, etc., etc. But this is good for getting good results and getting them fast. Now, as I said before, the default goes to the default top 1,000 of those top ports. So this is the default Nmap scan. Sign scan, time in three, and it's the top 1,000 top ports. And this is TCP, by the way. If you want UDP, you have to specify this in the scan type. You have to specify the U. So the default scan is exactly the same as typing in this and then typing in our IP address. Now. Okay, next we'll be doing the uh, scan type TCP connect, which you put in by doing this, dash ST. So TCP connect, which um, differs from the sign scan in that it does a normal three-way TCP handshake, which takes a bit longer, but in modern sort of situations and environments, it's a, a bit more reliable than the sign scan, because a lot of firewalls and security software actually flags the... Uh, the sign scan as something bad because only Nmap uses a sign scan really. So yeah, to get this going we'll just put in our uh, our IP address and this will run the exact same default scan 
minus the sign part of the scan, it will just um, perform TCP connects as it should do. And there you go. Top 1000 ports again, everything is exactly the same. Okay, next we will be doing a UDP scan. So that's dash S for scan type and then U for UDP. Now, an important thing to know, oh God, I can't remember the IP address. This is why we put it in the copy and paste. Okay, so when we specify uh, UDP, it will scan UDP ports as opposed to the TCP ones. Now, a lot of people tend to mix them up, but remember there are UDP port ports as well as TCP ports. So um, this will run um, default timing, UDP scan, and it will do the top 1000 ports, but it will be the top 1000 UDP ports, not the top 1000 TCP ports. But the thing to know about the UDP scan is it takes a lot longer than um, a TCP scan. Uh, yeah, it takes a lot longer than a TCP scan because of the nature of the UDP protocol. Whereas like the TCP, you will get a response because it has to establish a connection to send TCP data, whereas UDP is a connectionless protocol. So when it, you're sending data over UDP, the service might not send anything back. Like there's no rules that says it has to. So the NMAP UDP scan is it tries to send it dummy data to try and provoke a response. And if it doesn't get a response within a certain um, time frame, then it will time out and it'll move on to the next one. And uh, obviously the disadvantage to this is it takes a while. So I will set this going. This will take a little while. Okay, there's the uh, UDP scan done. And this took a long time. It took about 15 minutes to get this thing done. But yeah, you see here the difference on the port. It says uh, UDP, so 53 slash UDP as opposed to TCP. Now, uh, a lot of people overlook the UDP ports because um, about 95% of the, uh, the internet uses TCP. So um, it's not used as much, but if you're being thorough, it's a, it's a good thing to check up on as well. Now, um, let's get into the real usefulness of NMAP. So our next scan type is dash S, is the version scan, which is dash S V. And then we will paste our IP address in there. And what this does is not only does it look at what ports are open and closed, but it also tries to figure out what is running on those ports and it tries to get version information from them. Now, in addition to this, I'm going to speed this up a bit by using the dash T flag. Now, this is for timing and uh, we will set it to four to speed it up a little bit. For the majority of use cases, T3, the default timing, is good. The higher you make the time in, the more likely it is that the scans can become unreliable and uh, they become noisy as well because you're sending lots of information. It, it really lights up networks. So uh, default timing is usually the one to stick to. If you're um, doing proper commercial testing, then um, you'll probably end up using T2 quite a lot because it allows you to get more accurate results and it's less likely you'll be discovered. Now you can see here, we have got an extra column. We have the version column. And under this, it is actually displaying what is running on these ports. So on port 21, TCP 21 that is, we are running an FTP service, which is VSF TPD 2.3.4. So this information is brilliant. We can, figure, we can go and research that software, see if there's any um, exploits available for it, and uh, see if there's any way we can um, exploit it. Okay, so that was the uh, the version scan. So if I clear this up now. Next, what if you only want to see a certain port? Well, um, that's easy to do. We just use the dash P flag. This is specifying what ports you want to scan. So say we want to scan port 80 on our Metasploitable. So that's doing the default sign scan and it's doing it with uh, default timing as well. If you don't specify a scan type, it will just fall back to the sign scan. And there we go, we have port 80. Now, if we want to see what's running on that service, we'll 
put that in again, but this time we'll specify the scan type as our version scan. This time it will grab the, uh, the version information, which should say Apache. And there we go, we have our version information now. Now, there are other ways you can specify port numbers. You can specify just the one, or you can give it a list of port numbers, like so. They don't have to be in a specific order, they will be organized after it's done scanning them. You can also give it ranges of ports, so 0 to 1000, that will scan port 0 to port 1000. And um, one thing I see a lot of people doing, and um, as I said before, there's um, 65,535 ports. So I, I see this being put in, in, the, um, in the parameters so that they can scan all the ports, which you don't have to do. There's an easier way to do this. So instead of specifying those numbers, you can do dash P dash, and that will do port 0 to port 65,535. This will be just the TCP ones, unless, of course, you specify UDP, of course. Okay, the next um, parameter we're going to look at is the dash capital O, which stands for operating system or OS scan. So it tries to figure out what exactly is running. So I am just going to add a T4 to speed this up a little bit. So we're doing our dash SV version scan. In addition to that, it's going to run the OS detection, and the T4 is just speeding up. And remember that T3 is the default scan timing, T4 and 5 are a little bit quicker, and T0, 1 and 2 are the slower ones. So the slowest is T0 and the quickest is T5. Okay, and that's our scan done. Now you'll notice that in addition to our version scan information here, we have some OS information down here. So we can see here the nmap thinks it's running a Linux 2.6.x so that means it knows it's running Linux 2.6 but it doesn't know the exact version number so it's very confident it's running this family of software but it doesn't know the exact exact specification now okay I'm just going to clear this and we'll get on to the next one yeah we're going to look at dash a now a lot of people think this is the all scan but it is not the a scan what its equivalent is is a version scan then OS detection and in addition to that it runs a number of nmap scripts so nmap has what's called the nmap scripting engine or NSC for uh, short and these scripts allow it to uh, do very specific tasks and do vulnerability checks, little um, like little tricks here and there in order to get more information. So um, a scripting engine has lots of these little uh, scripts that it will run. So if I get rid of that, that will run the aforementioned scripts and the version scan and the OS detection. So it just saves you typing everything out, just dash capital A and I will put in a dash T4 to speed it up again. Okay, our scan is complete, so let's scroll up a little bit. Now you'll see we have our same columns here for the version scan, but under each port it's actually um, put a little section which has very unique information. So for this one, port 21 and the FTP service, it's run a number of scripts to try and find some more information for it. So it's run the FTP-anon script, which determines whether or not you can log into the FTP server anonymously, and it has found that it, it is allowed, which is very bad. And the next one it's run is ftp sys t and it looks like this one, um, it just gets some basic information from the server. So there we go. And you can see for other ports, it's found other uh, information, such as the SSH uh, keys. And what other ones have we got? Looks like it's looked at the um, SMTP, that's Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, 
it's looked at the commands that it's allowing. And you see it's just got a lot more detailed information about each port. And at the very bottom, you can see host script results. So those are the extra scripts that it ran. And uh, you can see here, actually um, is displaying the name of um, Metasploitable, the, uh, the vulnerable virtual machine that we're running this against. So they can tell you a lot of information. Clear that up. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is, uh, let's say we want to scan all the TCP um, ports. So that's all 65,000 odd of them. So dash P dash for all 65,535 ports. I have to Google that to memorize it. I always forget that bloody number. And uh, we want all of them to scan, and we'll put in our uh, IP address of uh, Metasploitable, and we'll set that going. Now, the problem is this will just give us no information until it completes, and this can take a long time. So I'm just going to control C this. That stops it. Now, what you can do, we'll run the same scan, but we'll add dash V, which is the verbose flag. And what that does is it gives us a lot more information, but as it's scanning, you can see that it will um, it will actually tell you any ports that it finds open as it's scanning. So we can see here that it's showing us ports that are being discovered as it's scanning them. Now, if you're doing um, a time-critical task, such as an exam or um, a pen test for a company, it's only got so much time that you're allowed to uh, access it it's very handy because as it's scanning you can see what's open and you can use other tools to figure out what's going on with it or you can set up more nmap scans against it so that is the verbose flag okay our final flag to give it is dash pn now nmap before it starts doing any port scanning it will actually try and ping the target with the icmp ping echo request and um a common practice now is to disable a machine's ability to respond to that. So if it gets a ping, it will not respond to it. So um, if you run Nmap against that machine with its default um, settings, it will try and ping it and it will not get a response and it will assume that it's down and it will not do any scans against it. So to prevent that, you put in the dash PN and that skips the ping and it will run the port scan anyway. So we'll do that, and we'll do the, put that in there, and that will just do the default scan, skipping out the uh, the ping at the beginning, and we'll just go ahead and port scan it anyway. And there it is. Standard default scan. So yeah, that's everything. I hope that this has been informative to you. I realize there's a, a lot more features to Nmap, which I have missed out. Like there are a lot of features such as its output, output into a file, it can um, take an input list from a file, but for the most part, you'll be using them if you're doing more advanced penetration testing and if you're automating the process. So this is just a brief overview. Feel free to look at the uh, the manual for Nmap. So type in M, Nmap and it will tell you a lot more of the options you have available. So you can see there are even different um, version intensities for um, the version scan and the, there are lots of options for use so yeah i hope this was useful and uh, thank you for watching